Well, good evening and welcome to the Arbor Hills Nature Preserve in Plano, Texas. Tonight's exercise is a field test of the Cyan Sky P25 V2 in pale silver right here. Cyan Sky sent me this light and requested a review, so first of all, I want to thank them for making the video possible. I'm probably going to do the complete review in two parts. Tonight, field testing, and later on in the winter, uh, some extended stress testing for possible use of this platform in uh, selected search and rescue applications that I have. Now, you've probably already been to the manufacturer's website. You've seen all the marketing hype. You're not here for that, I know. You're here for the beam shots and the field testing. But I do want to point out just a few things that probably aren't in the online uh, marketing literature about this light. First of all, just in terms of general construction, fit, and feel, I really like how this light fits in my hand. There are very few lights that, just from the moment I pick them up, uh, I'm, I'm impressed with how they feel. And I don't even like underhand grip, but this one switches to overhead very quickly if you're interested in using the same lighting mode over and over. This is a great switch. It's on par with uh, any other Phoenix light I've used, for example. Phoenix has great switches. On the subject of switches, the side switch is both raised and textured, so it's very easy to get to. It's very easy to find. This clip does not move easily, so if you orient the clip in the direction of the side switch, just slide your thumb down and you can get directly to the side switch and operate the uh, basic lighting modes. So overall, some very uh, impressive features there. However, that's not my favorite in terms of the general packaging of the light. My favorite is right here. Hope that shows up okay on the phone. That's a burn down chart right in the user's guide. This is great information, particularly if you are new to flashlights, because it's easy to get caught up in the lumens, lumens, and more lumens game, but you really have to play two or three games. You have to play peak lumens, peak candela. We'll talk about that more uh, later in the field testing, and the higher the lumen output, the greater the thermal regulation. That's just, you know, basic physics and, and engineering. So what you see here is that that uh, turbo mode, you only get a couple minutes or so out of uh, full turbo, and then it drops and drops hard down to about high. That's why I recommend when you're looking at a lighting system, look at the high mode instead of turbo. Medium and high are the modes you're probably going to make your money off, so to speak. I really want to make sure high in particular is good and consistent like we see here, and that I can match that high mode to a important use case. So having this information, having the uh, peak lumens and candela, all right on one page. Uh, big kudos to the manufacturer there. Now you probably wonder what is that other light? That's another Cyan Sky, the K3 Long Throw. We'll be doing a bit of a comparison because these two lights are kind of at opposite ends of the spectrum. You have one that's very high lumen, but is at its peak relatively low candela, less than 11,000 peak candela, versus a light that has 1,600 lumens peak, however, 90,000 peak candela, uh, dramatically different beams, and we will be looking at a comparison as part of the field testing tonight. Uh, sorry, that was a very long intro. I know what you're interested in. We're going to get there. need about another 30 minutes or so for the sun to go down, and it will be non-stop field testing. All right, let's get started. I am in low mode right now, just looking at the ground. We're coming up to the bridge. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know this is where we do the basic mode tests. Going to be looking at uh, low, medium, high turbo tonight. I don't have much interest in the uh, other auxiliary modes, so let's get out into the uh, usual position. Again, that's low. Maximum line of sight is about 35 plus yards. There is 
medium then high and turbo and those are your basic lighting modes Well, I'm getting off trail here. I'm in medium now. Seems we always have somebody who wants to be a movie star and make an appearance in the video. One of the things I'm always interested in, and I don't like to talk about this, but in search and rescue, there's always that phase where search transitions into rescue. And one of the most difficult decisions I'll ever have to make is leaving someone possibly to help guide other responders into our position to help with an difficult extraction. So I may need to leave a light with someone in addition to area lighting I set up, possibly a fire, shelter, water, everything like that, chem lights. So I'm kind of interested in this medium mode, which I'm in now, and kind of imagine yourself being right over in this position you've got a broken leg and can you just look around and get an idea of your very basic near-term surroundings in this mode I think the answer is yes but I need to see it I need to actually uh, look at it and the runtime in this mode is pretty incredible so I, I wouldn't have a problem leaving a person uh, with this light and some chem lights in addition to area lighting that I set up for many, many, many hours. So uh, at least for me personally, this is a very good test. So here's another quick test in medium mode, just looking down into a creek area. Got a very wide field of view, but a, a pretty well-defined hot spot as well. So even though this isn't the highest candela light, they are making use of the candela that they've got. A very interesting mix of uh, hot spot and spill there. So we're stepping it up a bit, a little bit more distance, another creek area. We're in high mode right now. Also looking back up, not up, but uh, we do have the 60% uh, moon right in front of us, although partially obscured by clouds. I like to test in imperfect environments because of course, every light looks good in a perfectly dark environment. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and move further into the preserve and do a lot more tests on uh, high and turbo and open up the field of view more. So here's another test in high, pretty wide open area with the tree line in front of me, about a football field away. It angles off to the left and of course the uh, distance from my position keeps increasing. Next, we'll go look at a couple of tests in turbo. Okay, we're on turbo now. This is a area where if I look at maximum line of sight through these openings in the tree line, I could easily go back a couple hundred yards. So this kind of shows you what it looks like on turbo. Now, uh, on the one hand, for an 11,000 peak candela light, that's not bad at all, uh, particularly since I would use turbo and short bursts. But let me show you quickly the difference between this and the K3. Okay, there we go with the uh, K3 on turbo, and I've got line of sight to and inside that far tree line, but it's a pretty tight, narrow beam. So if you've never really been exposed to 
the difference between high lumen and high candela. Hopefully this will give you a, a quick introduction. And again, uh, we have the 60% moon partially obscured by clouds, but only very partially ahead of me and to my right. Here's another turbo test looking back into a dark pocket. That tree line in front of me is very dark and uh, we have the lit observation tower in front of me to the left. So I always find this a uh, particularly interesting spot to test kind of the, the penetrating power of a light. And uh, I think for this distance and the potential use cases for this light, uh, this is looking really pretty good. Here's a, another turbo test looking from the top of the observation tower down to the outer loop trail. Uh, we have some light behind me from the observation tower. Then we have uh, light pollution from the surrounding city, but I can actually see down there. So uh, overall, uh, not bad, really. Although, uh, I will say for those who want to know, yes, it is getting hot. Not unbearably hot, but hot. So here is another test on medium. I always like to look at uh, the lower modes on a flashlight as being useful in lieu of a headlamp or as an alternative in case of catastrophic headlamp failure and so you know what's it like to make your way along a well-groomed pathway in medium mode and here you have it go just a little further here overall not bad not bad at all I'm actually really kind of digging this medium mode See the armadillo? This is my uh, headlamp, but just uh, some bonus footage here of some of the animal life you can see out here at the preserve. Well, interesting night. I passed by a number of rabbits, two deer, and a bobcat. Here we are at the area that I normally do some final tests, uh, well over 55 yards out maximum line of sight. We are in uh, medium right now. There is high. And turbo. Of course, turbo is generally good for short bursts, maybe 15 to 30 seconds. I'm going to overuse that and abuse that tonight. We'll do a quick 360 in turbo here take this out to uh, well over a minute and yes it is getting hot not unbearably but definitely hot this is way longer than I would ever conceivably use turbo on uh, this light, but almost back to where we started. And right there, uh, I should also point out we've got a lot of particulates in the air tonight. The clouds have moved away. We have the full brunt of the moonlight down on us now. So I'm going to head back to the truck and do a couple more test and then a quick summary. Well, here I am back at the truck. I thought I'd just do one last test in low medium, just kind of experimenting, looking around the vehicle. Overall, a very interesting evaluation. Uh, there is medium, and I'll just pan around here. 
Overall, I really like the light. I like the balance between hot spot and spill. In terms of would I use this light in active search? No, but consider that I own about 50 lighting systems between flashlights and headlamps. And there's nothing I've seen in preliminary testing over the last two days or testing tonight that would make me run out and replace something that I already have. Uh, in fact, I get better results across the board from my headlamp. Now, that's just an honest assessment, and I would certainly hope that that was the case because that headlamp cost over $200. Uh, now, if you're looking for a very good general purpose light that can do a lot of things reasonably well, uh, you are amenable to the Cyan Sky brand. Well, this may just be the droid that you're looking for. Now, this particular model has some very interesting advertised durability properties. I do intend on testing those out in detail as uh, we move later into the winter. But this is going to wrap it up for tonight as I take uh, one final look around the truck and back out into the parking lot. As always, thank you very much for your time, and thank you for watching the video.